Report B743-233, Part 1, Take 1. Edited, copy. For 25 years, William Hogarth has served as a prison officer and has an apparently unblemished record of service. On the morning of December the 3rd last year, he was found in one of the washrooms with a severely injured prisoner. A subsequent police investigation resulted in charges being brought against Officer Hogarth. Today, in Fulchester Crown Court, he faces trial by jury, charged with wounding with intent to cause grievous bodily harm a prisoner in his charge, Mick Johnson. Mr Justice Campbell presides in the case of the Queen against Hogarth, Mr Charles Lotterby appears for the prosecution, Mr Marcus Golding for the defence. Ribs on the left side of your chest, two on the right, and a skull fracture in the occipital region. And the doctor reports that you still suffer from recurring headaches and spells of dizziness. Is that right? Yes, sir. Johnson, do you have a headache now? At <coughs> this moment? Yes. Or are you feeling dizzy? Yes. Then would you sp please speak up so that the jury may hear your answers? Sir. Well. The uh, rib fractures, do they still pain you? And does your chest still hurt? It's a cough like. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to tell the court exactly how these injuries were incurred. Ah. Just take your time. Now, on uh, December the 3rd last, just before midday, where were you? In the box, sir. The witness is referring to the lavatories, my lord. Uh, the lavatories are joining the engineering workshop. Usher, yeah. would you show the witness the plan, please? So you uh, went to the lavatory? Yes. Mm. Why? Well, I wanted to, like, uh, relieve myself. Yes. Uh, now, there are two lavatories in the washroom, are there not? Which of the two lavatories did you go to? The one nearest the window? Yes. Now, why did you go to that particular lavatory? Oh, no, that's the one. The drop. Thank you, Usher. <clears throat> the drop. Yes, my lord, the, uh, the drop. A uh, drop for what? Happies. Happies. Uh, you mean drugs? Yes. Yes. So you chose that particular lavatory in the hope of finding some drugs hidden there? Yes. Now, where did you look? Up top of the... Uh, the cistern? That's it. Yes. Uh, did you find anything? Yes. Yes. What? Yes, sir. No, no, no. What did you find? <clears throat> Some stuff, sir. What stuff? I don't know. Well, what... What did it look like? Powder, it was, in a screw bump. What colour powder? Well, sort of whitish. Whitish? Could have been angel dust. Angels what? Uh, Fensiclity, my lord, also known as P.O.P., commonly known as um, angel dust. Really? It's a powerful hallucinogenic, I believe. Thank you, Mr Lotterbeer. So, what did you do? Well, took some, of course. Orderly? By mouth? That's right. And then, what happened? Well, I'd hardly taken it when the og... Mr Ogarth come in, didn't he? Johnson, I appreciate that you are still convalescing, but since your evidence could be crucial in determining the issue in this case, I insist that you give us the benefit of hearing it. In other words, speak up. Right. Mr. Lottabin. Now, you say Mr. Hogarth entered the washroom? Yes. So what did you do then? Well, I heard him say, right then. So I flushed it quick, didn't I? You flushed the drug down the lavatory. Yes. And then? Like I told the law, the og, I mean, Mr. Hogarth came rushing over at me. He says, I saw you do that, and he comes rushing over. Yes. And? He done me over. Johnson. He busted me. He done me. He busted you. He done you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. 
Uh, just stay there, please. You're not popular with the other prisoners in Fulchester, are you, Mick? You are. Well, don't they tend to pick on you? I suppose so. Yes, they pick on you, bait you, even assault you. So what? And Mr Hogarth, does he pick on you too? All the screws are on at you, aren't they? But he never physically attacked you before the alleged incident. No? No. My Lord Johnson's prison record is part of the agreed documents. Perhaps this would be a good time for the jury to look at it. Very well. Now, Johnson, isn't it true that on occasions you've actually got yourself put into it's solitary possible. confinement so as to escape the tormentings of your fellow prisoners? Well, isn't that so? If you say so. Is it correct, Johnson? Yes, sir. Yes. You seek refuge in solitary. Nasty. Pathetic even. And is that why, in November last, you tipped off one of the prison officers as to the whereabouts of an illicit brewery hidden in one of the prison greenhouses? Come on, isn't it true that you grasped to the screw so as to get your own back at the other prisoners? You stopped their little brewing enterprise, didn't you? We shall have to take your silence as acknowledgement, you know. Johnson, just answer the question yes or no. Yes. Yes, you did. Now then, this business of the, uh, the angel dust. You say you knew that the lavatory was used as a drop point to distribute drugs? Yes. And that you'd found some there? That's right. Yes. Uh, may the witness see his statement, please? Now, when you were in the hospital, you made this statement to Detective Sergeant Cobb of the CID, correct? Yes. Now, why did you omit from it all reference to these drugs? Well, it says simply that Mr Hogarth came in and attacked you. Well... I don't know. Thank you. Look, if, as you say, you were sneaking drugs, why had you not taken the obvious precaution of locking the lavatory door? You what? You hadn't locked the door. No. No what? No, you mean you hadn't locked it? Of course not. Well, why? Surely, in the circumstances... They don't have no locks, do they? Not in stir. Oh. They don't have no doors, neither. Have you uh, never been inside, Mr. Golding? Uh, not, I'm thankful to say, my lord, in those quarters. Uh, <clears throat> my lord, uh, the plan submitted in evidence does show that there are no doors. Indeed it does, Mr. Lotterbeer. I see. Locked doors everywhere else, but not for privacy. That's right. Now, if we may return to this business of the uh, sickbed statement... Uh, the prosecution has claimed that you were still concussed. Still somewhat gaga from your head injury. Yes, that's it. Yes. Well, I'm going to put it to you that your account of what happened is a complete fabrication. A what? I'm suggesting that you've been lying to this court, Johnson, as part of a deliberate plan to frame the accused. No. This business of your grassing on the hooch brewing, isn't that what started it? Hey. The prisoner, the brewer, the man who you betrayed, he found out it was you, didn't he? He found out that you were the snout. And so he caught you in the lavatories that morning. You're going to be for a beating, Mick, he said. Oh, my but Lord. remember, when they ask who did you over, tell them it was the hog, right? My Lord, this is all hearsay. Quite so, Mr. Lotterby, but there's no possible objection to it. My Lord. Now, you duly made your sickbed statement to the police naming Mr. Hogarth, correct? Well, of course you did. We've got copies of it here. And then, after the police detective, is it not possible that you had another visitor at the prison hospital? Well? No. I don't never get no visitors. No? Didn't someone else come and tell you to add this ingenious little embellishment about uh, finding the angel dust and flushing it down the pan? Uh, my Lord, I'm... Thus a... providing a possible motive where before there had been uh, none. My Lord, I must insist that my learned friend rephrase. Uh, well, my lord, let me put it this way for my learned friend. Was not the assault, in fact, delivered by a fellow prisoner as punishment for your betrayal of the brewing plant? That's him. Oh, Garth, he's made that up, hasn't he? Look, just answer my question. Who was it assaulted you? It was him. Mr. Oh, Garth, he does... Very well, very well. Any further questions, Mr. Golding? No, my lord, thank you. Mr. Lotterby? Uh, no, my lord. Very well, Johnson, you may leave the witness box, officer, and take him back to the holding cell. <laughs> uh, could
Call Principal Officer Carrington, please. And you were on duty in the workshop that morning? As usual, sir. I'm an instructor officer, General Engineering. Ah, yes. Now, Mr. Carrington, would you please tell the jury the events as you remember them on that morning? Yes, sir. Well, we'd had a bit of an accident up at the far end of the shop. One of the lads had got careless with a welding torch and touched off some lubricating fluid. There was a bit of a flare up. Usher, would you, excuse me, would you please show the witness the plan? Please continue. Well, I was just about to sort it out when Vic Sneed, that's another of the prisoners, yelled for me to come quick. Mm. Now, where was he calling from? Uh, outside the washrooms, about, uh, about there. Mm -hmm. And what did you do? Well, I couldn't see Mr. Hogarth anywhere, and as Sneed was obviously urgent about something, I nipped along smartish. Uh, Sneed said something about the washroom, so I went inside. Yes? Well, little Johnson was lying on his back in the doorway of the father's toilet. As it turned out, he was unconscious. Mm -hmm. Where was the accused? Uh, sort of, uh, well, you know, standing over him. Uh, Mr. Carrington, we do not know. How do you mean, standing over him? Well, uh... A foot on either side. Was he striking him? No, no, not at that moment, but it looked as if he just had been. Had been? Uh, well, from the way he was standing, the state he was in. Well, what sort of a state? Well, he was upset, he was red in the face, out of breath. You see, he saw us more or less as we came in, sir, so... Yes? Well, he did have the time to check himself. I see. So you formed the definite opinion that the accused had been assaulting... Johnson. Well, not definite, no, but that is the way it looked. He was not armed, I mean, with the truncheon. Oh, no, 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 sir. It was more as though he'd been kicking him. As though he had been kicking him? Yes. Mm. Thank you, Usher. So then what happened? Well, he turned on Sneed. He started yelling at him, calling him a bloody thug, and he said, you're done for this time. Said that to Sneed? Yes. You're done for this time. And then? Well, I helped get Johnson stretched out on the washroom floor and I stayed with him while Mr. Hogarth went to telephone for help. When he came back, he turned on Sneed again and said he was for the high jump. He said Sneed was for the high jump? Yes. What did you do? Well, there was only the two of us on duty. It's the usual <coughs> problem, understaffing. So I took Sneed outside so I could keep an eye on the rest of the lads. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Carrington. Now, it's been suggested that Mr. Hogarth might have caught Johnson flushing uh, some narcotics down the lavatory. What, what do you say about that? Well, uh, he didn't say anything about that at the time. The suggestion is that the lavatory was used as a drop point for drugs. Oh, yes, yes, it's true. We have found drugs up there, up on the system. You have found drugs there? Yes, yes, about a month ago. Mm. Thank you. Now then, uh, prior to the incident, had the accused ever discussed the victim, Johnson, with you? Yes. Yes, oh. he, he had. What did he say? Well, he said that he thought that he, uh, Johnson, that is, ought to be in a nut house. In a mental hospital? Yes, he reckons he's a nutcase, that he'd be better off in a nut house, uh, a mental hospital, than upsetting things in stir. Are you telling us the accused resented Johnson, resented his very presence in the prison? Well, yes, but it's inevitable, really, isn't it? I mean... Well, you can live with the others, the recidivists, in and out all the time for fraud or theft. I mean, even the lifers, the lifers that are in for murdering the missus. I mean, you can put up with them because, basically, they're straight. But when it comes to sex offenders, nobody likes them. No one. Not the staff, not the inmates. And that's what Johnson was done for. Sex offences. <laughs> Now, this so-called accident you referred to, you say one of the prisoners had ignited a tin of lubricant with his welding torch and that there was a bit of a flare-up. Yes, yes, that's right, but it was nothing very serious. But enough to distract you, to concentrate your attention in the corner of the workshop. Uh, yes, yes, I suppose so. Yes. So the accident could have been a deliberate distraction. Could have been. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Carrington. 
Now then, uh, you are 30 years old and already a principal officer. Yes. Mm. The same rank as the accused and yet 17 years younger than he is. Well, surely such a situation could make for jealousy? It's possible. Mm. Would you describe your relationship with the accused as friendly? We get along. Oh, come now. The truth is that you are frequently in disagreement, is it not? If not over your age differential, then over recent reforms in the prison. Well, from, from time to time, but, but that's something we all talk about. Yes, there's been a major shift, has there not, from prison as a place for punishment to one of treatment. The modern prison officer is encouraged to regard himself more as a, a therapist than as a turnkey disciplinarian. Well, if you mean we're concerned with working towards the prisoner's release, P-R-E-S and that, yes. P-R-E-S? Pre-release employment service. Oh, aiming at effective rehabilitation. Yes. Mm. And Mr. Hogarth, how would you say he feels about this trend? Did he ever tell you? Well, since you mention it, he's not too keen, is he? I mean, yes. we'll take the business of the lock-in. The uh, prison officers worked to rule last year? Yes, well, that wasn't just about cash. That was a protest against working conditions. 20% understaffing, 30% overcrowding. That's bound to be detrimental to the treatment of the prisoners. And to their rehabilitation? Yes, their whole relationship with the staff. And Mr. Hogarth? Well, he didn't give a damn, did he? Well, I mean, to hell with the POA, to hell with the union. There was no overtime ban for him. And why? Because he doesn't like changes. And because he thinks it's wet nursing to treat a prisoner like a human being. Mm. You don't think there's a danger of some uh, prison officers, particularly younger ones, hiding behind these reforms? Uh, as an alternative to exerting their authority? Taking the easy way out, in fact? Well, yes, of course, but uh, that's what he reckons, isn't it? That's wet nursing. Quite so. And also the danger that the more reform-conscious could let themselves be conned by some of the old lags. Conned? Well, isn't there a tendency to turn a blind eye to some of the illicit activities, such as trafficking in hooch, uh, some of the milder narcotics, such as pot, in return for a more relaxed relationship with the prisoners? Now, look here, I don't well, really think that My lord, I must that object is... to this whole line of questioning. Yes? Well, my learned friend seems to be insinuating that... Uh, uh, the more progressive officers, such as Mr. Carrington, are prepared to effect deals with the prisoners. Mr. Golding? Well, whether or not such deals occur, my lord, my intention was... My friend's intention seems to be to slur the character of the witness. Uh, my intention, my lord, is merely to demonstrate the friction existing between these two men. Uh, my contention is that Mr. Carrington had a deep-rooted dislike of the accused and that this might have uh, prejudiced his assessment of what he saw on entering the washroom. Yes. Well, I think you've sufficiently canvassed that point, Mr. Golding. Don't you agree? As your lordship pleases. Is it not true that you had an affair with the accused wife, Betty Hogarth? Good Lord, no. Well, did you not early last summer have a bitter altercation with the accused over the attentions you've been paying his wife? Yes, well, it is quite true that we did have a row. But yes, the row followed a social evening at the Staff Recreation Centre? Yes, it was mm. at the Staff You'll Recreation Centre. You'll admit that Mrs Hogarth has a certain reputation for flighting. No, look here, the I really don't think... The row is yet another example. Of the... It would be nice if the witness was at least allowed to answer the original question. Quite so. Mr Golding, the law is not a monologue. Well, Mr. Carrington? Well, yes, it, it's true we did have a row about his wife, sir, but it, it had nothing at all to do with an affair. I was having a go at Betty because of his attitude to our work to rule. Having a go? Well, she was his wife, sir. I thought she might help bring him round to supporting us. He was blacklagging, sir. So you were simply trying to recruit her help? Yes, of course. He took it the wrong way. I mean, he took it that I was... Well, you know that I was chatting her up, sir. Thank you. Golding? Well, whatever your true object, the incident was nevertheless yet another source of friction, was it not? I suppose so. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Carrington. This uh, conflict over the reforms in the prison, was it solely between yourself and uh, Mr. Hogarth? Oh, no. No, not at all. There's quite a lot of younger staff joined lately since Mr. Price became the governor. Of course, to hear him talk, he, re he reckons we're all a load of twits. I see. Look, he's an old guard screw, isn't he? And his type do more harm than good in a modern prison. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Carrington. Except that Fulchester is not a modern purpose-built prison, is it? I was meaning the administration. The modern ideas and methods. Ah. 
Well, now my friend has finished his second cross-examination. Perhaps your lordship would like to ask some questions. No, thank you, Mr. Dotterby. Very well, Mr. Carrington, you may leave the witness box. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My last witness is Victor Alfred Sneed. Victor Alfred Sneed, please. And you are currently serving a prison sentence for fraud? Uh, doing a five stretch, yes, mm -hmm. sir. What sort of fraud? Well, I've been working the fencing game, see? Me and a partner. Oh, you want me to, like, uh, spell it out for you? If you would. <clears throat> well, simply, we'd uh, pick up some flush mug in a boozer, con him into believing that we was unloading hot merchandise, you know, flog him a bit, on the cheap, just as a sweetener, say a bottle of scotch for a quid, and then take him to the cleaners for the bulk delivery. Take him... Cash in advance, say 50 quid or a ton, and then just scarf up. I see, so, so you were playing on the latent dishonesty and greed of these mugs. Oh, that's it, sir, yeah. It's not the most antisocial of crimes. Oh, certainly not, sir. No. Now, uh, would you tell the court, um, on the morning of the 3rd of December last, uh, were you in the prison's engineering workshop? Spraying, as usual. Spraying? Uh, paint, on the bars. Well, it's natural, isn't it? You've got a workshop, you've got to make something. We make bars, prison bars. Well, more grids, really, for the new prison out at Carnsworth. Uh, very practical, and it's your job to spray the grids with paint. Mum thin, now... mum fat. <coughs> Gets on your chest and all, I can tell you. Yes, I'm sure. Now, would you tell the court what happened that morning shortly before midday? Sure. Well, young Mick, uh, that's Mick Johnson, well, he's my little mate, see? Well, all right, he's not quite Mensa IQ, but that's how it goes, isn't it? Mick and me look after each other. Well, as you say, about midday, Mick takes off for a leak. Well, he's hardly in there, and I sees Mr Hogarth going there after him, and the fact is, this worries me. Why exactly? Well, because I know young Mick's got his little weaknesses. For what? He's a junk artist, isn't he, you know, for the drugs. And knowing him, I reckon he's in there, finger in the drop. You'd heard there might be drugs hidden in the lab? Well, might be, yeah. When I sees Mr Hogarth go in there after him, I reckon it could be trouble. I see. So then? Well, I'll leave it a couple of minutes and then I'll take a butcher's. And what did you see? Mr Hogarth. He was tearing into young Mick something rotten. Of course, I didn't hang about. I ran straight out and called Mr Carrington. He come down good and quick. <coughs> By the time we got back in there, young Mick was out cold. I see. Of course, the minute he sees us, Mr Hogarth starts trying to stick me with it, pointing a finger. Calling me a bleating fag and that. Yes, sir, we've been told. Uh, just one more thing, Mr. Steed. From what you said, are we to take it you've adopted a protective role towards Johnson? That's what this lies for, isn't it? Well, this being so, why, when you first looked into the washroom and saw the assault, why didn't you go straight in to his assistance? What, you mean uh, assault a prison officer? Oh, well, I mean, there are limits, aren't there? Limits? Look, if I'd have gone straight in there on me jack sure as nuts that I got done for screwing Mr Hogarth, I'd have been a big tod to do a thing like that. You were afraid of being falsely accused of an unprovoked assault on well, Hogarth. Well, that's what he would have liked, wouldn't he? He could have said he was defending himself. You don't take risks with every type. Not a nutcase crew like him. The case of the Queen against Hogarth will be resumed tomorrow in the Crown Court.